This is uh, Frank Keeney. And before we get started, let's just do a little bit of housekeeping. I want to make sure that everybody can hear me. So please type a one in the chat box if you can hear me. Okay, great. I see a lot of people here. So I, I, um, this is a fairly informal, not necessarily a presentation, but I'm looking for a real interactive group of people here. I'm sure we have a mix of people who are, uh, you know, new to e-commerce and trying to go, grow a business. So if you already have an e-commerce business, let's see, how can I do this? Um, if you're looking to start, type start in the chat box. If you are starting, if you've already started your business, type in, um, uh, type in e-commerce, and if you're making your living with e-commerce, type in living. Okay, I just want to see where we are. So we got some people getting stuff going. A lot of people starting e-commerce and no sales, e-commerce, e-commerce. So most people are starting or, but I don't see, any, nobody has typed in that they're making their living on e-commerce. Okay, one person has. I've got one person is making a living with e-commerce. Somebody's doing t-shirts. So two people, second person making the, a living. Uh, several people, e-commerce, no sales. <clears throat> and a bunch of people starting. Uh, living, I, I count two, three people that are making a living. No, And a bunch of people with, okay, one person says they've been online for 10 years. Great, been doing it a long time and making a good living. Yeah, I've been doing this since 2001. Oh, you, somebody's been doing it since 1998. That's even before me. 19, in 1998, I was working for a dot com, a dot com company. I was actually helping a uh, an e-commerce business back then. Jo hi, hi, John. Thanks for the mes message. No, it wasn't pets.com. It was, to I did a little, little bit of work for Toy Time, if you've heard of them. That's way back. <laughs> I did some, uh, in the dot-com days, I did some work with uh, a place called Insurion. Yep. Yeah, I used to, I did everything from, yeah, 98. 98, I had my, I was in uh, data center. I spent a lot of time in data centers back then, 97 and 98. And even 99 spent lots of time in data centers, and that's kind of where I where I got started. Uh, okay, uh, right? Okay, uh, okay. Scott says he's an IT guy by day. I started that, so I was in. Uh, I worked for. I actually worked for an advertising company as an IT uh, director for eight years, and left that company in 1997. So my days on the internet, I, uh, my oldest, the oldest domain that I have, I registered in 1995, and I originally started off with a um, a, bul a bulletin board, a BBS. <laughs> so um, back in the early 90s. So uh, I at one time in my home, I had an eight line BBS. Eight phone lines came. Yep, Hayes modems. Eight phone lines came into my house, and uh, I, actually, what I did, I, it was eight line BBS, and I, then I converted it over to a dial up ISP. I got a T1 into my house. All right, so I, I've dabbled with this stuff, and I saw lots of opportunities that I missed. Oh, uh, Phoenix says I ran an old C60 Commodore 64 and an Amiga. I ran RBBS on DOS. That's what I did, and. Uh, RBBS, and then I did all the um, FidoNet. That's that was my. I like that. I like FidoNet. All the networking part of it. That's what I always liked. So I jumped on the internet as soon as that came around. So I had an ISP in my house for uh, several years, and I also had a web hosting business. How, okay, Danny's asking how long this is. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I, I can end the the intro phase, but I just like to see who <laughs> to see what kind of some I always find some BBS people and IT people but what I did I did computer security for 
the um, dot com businesses. So I worked with firewalls and intrusion detection and so forth. Anyway, my early days in IT gave me my first inspiration for an e commerce business. So I'll go into that a little bit here too. Okay, so we've got some good introductions here. I kind of know where people are. Uh, this is great. So this, um, I just thought about doing this yesterday. I mean, I've got these, uh, Scott, yep, in, somebody in Iowa. I'm sure we've got people all over the world here. Um, so I thought I would just jump in. I don't do enough of these live webinars. And then... Um, just talk about just talk about e-commerce. It's kind of the end of the year, and um, I usually get asked by a couple of different groups to to talk about e-commerce. But I thought I'd do it for the people that I know that are on my email list and on Facebook, and and just get some people in here. All right, so we've got about fifty people here right now, and never heard of Demio. Yes. Demio is a, a, a nice pot. It's really easy to use, and I like the way it shares screens. I can switch back and forth. I also have go to go to uh, webinar, but I like this one when I have a larger crowd. It's just easier to manage from my my end, and it works really well. <clears throat> and um, it does the. Uh, it's not free. No, it's not free. But it's less expensive than the others. Like I. I um, Scott says he's been following me for a while. Great. Okay. Well, um, yeah, I started. Okay, so let's just jump into this. I my goal was to have this be fairly informal. Um, I have kind of an outline that I want to follow. I'm here. I'm in Pasadena, California, and looking forward to um, next week when we go to, up to our cabin in the mountains for Christmas and New Year's. So um, I may do another one of these next week, and it, it'll be in a different place. So, uh, ha yeah, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, um, uh, wh whatever you celebrate this time of the year. Um, some people uh, celebrate uh, uh, Cyber Monday, so, and that's, it's the shopping that is their, their holiday. But uh, we'll talk a little bit about the holidays in e-commerce sales and all sorts of things. So... Let me get into my slides, and you should see a slide. Um, just at least somebody's telling me they can see my slide. This is e-commerce 2018. Everybody can see that? Uh, okay. All right, here's a good question here. Phoenix says when uh, FB lowers their CPMs again. Well, that's not going to happen. And then we'll talk a little bit about how you can do that for yourself. Doesn't really matter that what the CPM is. It's okay. It's okay. You can see the slides. All right. So let me go to the next slide. All right. So what I'd like to do on like I want to I want to make this more interactive and kind of informal. <clears throat> so if you'd like me to critique your store or just any store, um, send it to me. Uh, at that email address and send me your include your mailing address also so what I'll end up doing is sending you uh, a um, I'll be it doesn't matter where you are in the world because I'll be drop shipping something from AliExpress to you so I'll just pick I'll pick something you maybe you can tell me one of your hobbies or something you like to do and then I'll go out and find something for you. How about that? I'll try to use some of my product selection methods to send you something cool. So if you want me to critique a store, either yours or another one that you've seen, and you're, and of course if it's yours, make sure that you're okay with me sharing it on this webinar. So Tim says CPMs will drop around January 2nd. Uh, yeah. Yes, but see, uh, my Facebook ad rep has told me in the last 12 months there's over a million new Facebook advertisers. So we're seeing a general trend of CPM going up. And some of the things we're going to talk about tonight will are things that uh, you can do to counteract that. All right. Uh, okay, I'll, just, I'll be doing the critique just a little bit later. Yeah, just please don't uh, share anything unless you want me to to show it. I'm just going to check my email once to make sure 
that things are coming through. I haven't seen. Yep, I've got them there. All right. Okay, so I'll be going through that. And let's see. All right, so we've got that piece of business out of the way. All right, so uh, for this webinar, I'm I'm just looking for quite. I want questions. So, and I want us to all to learn from each other. And let's move on to that. So one of the I just sent out an email. Uh, the last email I sent about an hour and a half ago, an hour ago or so. Uh, I I talked about an ugly store. Well, this was my my first e-commerce store. So I'm going to share that. I'm going to jump in and share that right now. I'm going to put this on mute for a moment while I clear my throat. I'm changing uh, screen sharing right now so we can get the right thing. Um, okay. That's okay if you don't have a store yet. Okay. Yes. Oh, oh Danny, that's a really a good comment. Uh, you said you say you don't have a store yet, but you've been procrastinating. You don't want to do drop shipping. You want to sell handmade products. So the only problem with do, selling handmade products is it's difficult to scale that business because it, it's hard to you become the bottleneck. Um. And all right. Okay. I'm just looking at the. Uh, questions here and we'll go I'll be going through all these questions Let's, I'm gonna go through a couple things here first and then okay all right so everybody should be able to see this store that says Pasadena Networks right just somebody say yes okay great so this was my first store so my first e-commerce store my my first sales of products on the internet were were on eBay now I wasn't just selling stuff that I had left over. I was stocking items and shipping them. And so in the early, those of you that have been around in the uh, technology uh, since the dot-com days, you you know that back in the year, like 2000, uh, 1999, 2000, and like 2001 were the early days of Wi-Fi. Uh, okay, so it was starting to become a popular thing. So I was doing a project uh, I got this project uh, with uh, Virgin Megastores to to manage a uh, a project they had to install Wi-Fi in all their stores. So my, I got my first idea for an e-commerce store based on a uh, consulting project that I had. So when I went out to uh, acquire all the products needed to set up Wi-Fi in the, all the Virgin Megastores, I found that I had to order things from like a half a dozen different places. And so the idea came to me, hey, well, wouldn't it, uh, I should just set up a one-stop shop. And so the first thing I did when I, um, uh, when I was trying to figure out, you know, all the things that I was going to keep in the stores, I went out and looked out, looked for my, uh, potential competitors. So I found a couple of business. I found quite a few that were doing kind of the thing that I was doing, but um, I just I wanted to do it better. So the first I first started on on eBay, which back in the early early two uh, thousands, eBay was is what Amazon is for people now. So I, I mean, I sold you know millions of dollars worth of product on eBay. And then moved over to, uh, I kept, people on eBay would ask me, hey, you know, they'd say, Frank, uh, you need to set up a store. So finally, I think it was in about 2002, 2003, I set up an online store. And that, um, so here's a, from the Wayback Machine, here's my earliest store. Now, the, all the images, are, links are broken. You know the link images are no longer uh, resolving at all, but this was a static HTML, uh, uh, static HTML, and it it was just a like a template I bought somewhere, and then I just I, all I did is so I've got images and I've got these add to cart buttons, and guess what happens when you click the add to cart buttons? 
let's see if it works. It just, they were just buttons linked to PayPal. Okay, so here's what PayPal looked like in uh, 2003. And so this store had no shopping cart. It had nothing except for buttons that went to PayPal. So each of these, each button would add something to a PayPal cart, which of course doesn't work anymore. Um, so that was my early, that's my first uh, e-commerce store was on this platform. So we used to sell all sorts of enclosures and, and you can't even see them yet. Most of the images are all gone. So I sold some expensive things too. And I still, still do actually I still have this store. It's been uh, kept current. So let's move on to the next thing. So let me switch back to the slide and stop sharing the screen. I'm going to share another, go back to the, the slide and go back here. Okay, here we go. All right. So there's the ugly store. So one of the, uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to share that is the store, even for 2003, it was, it was ugly. And what I learned from that, and, and I, I think it took me years to kind of really let this sink in, is that store was ugly, but it made, I, I sold millions and millions of dollars worth of product through that store. But the reason why it worked, it was an ugly store, but I had the right product. All right. So it was, so the opposite would be a really beautiful store with all the wrong products. And so I want you to, let's understand exactly the difference here. So what the biggest uh, problem I see with people that are new with e-commerce is they have beautiful stores and the wrong products and the stores that are making, and now of course, ideally you want a, a good looking store and the, and the right products, but an ugly store with the right products will outsell a beautiful store with the wrong products every minute of the day. Okay, so the the products that you, and the traffic that you are bringing to your products, there needs to be a match. That's the number one uh, important thing that we must do to grow and, and make profitable sales. We need to have the right products and the traffic that matches those products. And you can have an ugly store um, I never feel like my stores are ever finished. So uh, be careful about trying to make everything perfect. It's much better to start off with the right product and not quite a great store than to try to make everything perfect and wait and wait and wait. Okay. Phoenix says that's a serious nugget. Totally agree and seen. Yeah. So Phoenix, um, yeah, any you if you've had gone through the struggle of making sales with a store and then become successful with it, this is a, a lesson that everyone that's successful will learn is is about that match. Okay. Brad asked about some wrong products, so we'll talk a little bit more about products also. Uh, asking about how much to start a business, uh, you know, you can start it with nothing, uh, or almost nothing. So let me get to grab to my next slide. We'll talk about products and things quite a bit more. <clears throat> so, and we're going to actually talk about that right now. So the, the big, I, I've surveyed people over and over this last, in the last 12 months. And the biggest problem is finding the bright products. Okay. So, um, and I, if I were to narrowly, narrowly, if I can pronounce, if I can speak tonight, if I could, if I did too narrow of a definition of a of the right product, then everybody would be trying to sell the same thing. I think the 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 next, the biggest piece, the the most important, um, the most important thing overall for picking a product is understanding your target audience. So I'll give you an example. Um, I, I mean, I like things that are outdoors. I like camping and I like fishing. I like, I've got a, a Land Cruiser that I've built out so we can take 
for trips you know that go for a week or two weeks out in the desert i mean i love the outdoors um uh there's i've got several other hobbies so i understand things about the outdoors and camping and fishing and and tents and lights and building fires and being safe and and working on a four-wheel drive my land cruiser so but i don't i don't know anything about yoga so if someone asked me to sell a yoga product i wouldn't understand that audience so so i have gravitated when i my product sales gravitate to audiences that i know like based on things that i like to do <clears throat> so thing things that i I won't try to sell a product unless I understand the audience and that so I don't I know very little about cooking or baking I mean I make a couple uh, maybe I make uh, maybe two or three or four apple pies a year Thanksgiving and Christmas but I don't other outside of that I don't know anything about baking so I probably I wouldn't even try I probably wouldn't even try to sell a, a kitchen tool because I don't I don't get that group of people but I can pick a product uh, for people that like the outdoors. Okay, somebody says that somebody is comment is their products are geared toward yoga, but it, you know, to everyone has their own strengths and their own interests. So based on what that's uh, the what I rely on the most is on product selection is is my knowledge of the target audience. So for things related to say the outdoors i in many cases i'm picking things that i like i mean i have let me see if i can see my uh so i have this this uh i i, I don't know i don't know if i want to give away this what this product is but i have a flashlight that i think is really cool and i or, say what i do is i order samples constantly and and the stuff, often the, the things that end up being things that I use on a regular basis, I'll gravitate and make ads for those. Okay. Exactly. Phoenix says that's great because you know the pain points, problems to address. Absolutely. And I, uh, the products that I sell usually have some kind of benefit or solution involved with them. Um, you know that I can portray in a video ad, and I'm 100% video ads. That's it. Okay, so uh, yeah, Danny, you need to. Okay, Danny, we'll talk. I'll go through all the questions uh, later on. I don't want to just stop right where we are, but that's you've got a really great point, and that does take some uh, thought and maybe some mindset change. Okay. Um, you always, yeah, I always check everything that I sell, I've handled. I don't sell things that I haven't handled. And so, uh, okay, Scott says he'd love to make video ads, learned how to look, make video ads. So, uh, okay, I'm going to answer, I'll answer all the product questions a little bit later. So, I want to talk a little bit about product selection. So I'm, I typically are looking for something that I need to be able to answer the reason why they should buy it. It's not just because I'm going to say it's 50% off in the ad. It needs to be more than that. It's, I want to show it off in a way that the product is just irresistible. Is remember people don't buy on logic, they buy on emotion. All right. So and this next line I have here, don't chase top sellers. And ex Okay, the first thing here, I'll divide this up here. So don't chase top sellers. I never, I don't look for, I don't look for things that best sellers someplace else, somebody else's store on Amazon or some other place. I never, never look for the top sellers to determine, to decide what I'm going to sell. I use my knowledge of the target audience to pick products. It's the difference between the those that struggle and those that that thrive in this business and will 
under, will run their business based on their understanding of the target audience and not use, um, not copy someone else. Okay. Yeah, Phoenix, um, <laughs> um, every, what you wrote, you, Phoenix wrote, that is unique to the current e-com crowd. Excellent. Can't wait to hear more on doing that that way. So Phoenix, I, everyone tells me that. I don't, I don't not understand the current, what, uh, this is the only way now I know how to do it. This is what I do. And so this is what I talk about. I don't know any other, any other way to do this. So, uh, it, and then the next thing is, is ignore. So ignore the Amazon prices. And the reason why I'm saying that is, is that I, the item, when I sell something on Facebook, I'm usually charging anywhere from 30 to 60% more than what it costs on Amazon, if it is on Amazon. And and does anybody know why? Does anybody know why we can charge more on Facebook ads than we can on, than, you know, much more than what even it's being sold for on Amazon? Anybody know why we can do that? Surprised nobody's answered. Impulse buyers, yes. You're the only product in front of them. Yes, that's exactly social acceptance. That I'm not sure about that. Targeting the audience and showing results. Non-competition, that's right. Emotion, Simon says, why? And I'll answer it, why? A lot of people don't buy on Amazon, correct? Okay, so it, the reason why is because Amazon, Amazon is a search engine and Facebook is a social media platform. So, and on Amazon, someone needs to first know what they're going to buy first, then they go look for it. People don't go on Facebook to buy products. So what, what we need to be, uh, Facebook is what I call a true, a true marketing platform. So, Facebook, what Facebook does is they give a, they've got this place for us to share things and interact. And because of our behavior on the platform, Facebook in the, I would like to call it the Facebook artificial intelligence, knows what we're interested in based on our behavior in the platform. So uh, us as marketers, we can use the the in the interests of the Facebook users to target them with products they didn't know they wanted yet until they saw saw the ad. Okay, Ramsey people do not compare prices. Yeah, this webinar will be recorded, but please don't go. Please don't go. It, it there will be replay, but you'll get much more out if you can ask some questions. Uh, so. Um, oh, what I, it's, I, I, I estimate that 95% of the people that we're reaching an audience that is, that Amazon doesn't have. Oh, I'm sorry, you have to leave, but yeah, there will be a re replay. So a couple things, any questions about this slide before I move on? Uh, okay, well, I'm usually... <laughs> Uh, okay, so I yeah, I'm not sure which statement you want me to repeat. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, this is uh, um, but yeah, I ignore. I I really don't. Even, I never check Amazon prices. I there, Amazon is not in my universe at all. I sell I sell millions of dollars on Amazon every year, but the products I sell with Facebook ads. I don't ever compare them. I use Amazon to um, to buy things for myself and and sell lots of product. Okay, so I, yeah, I completely ignore the prices on Amazon. I don't even Amazon is not a factor in my decision making of prices at all. I'll, I just I pick what I I price my products so I can make a profit. That's that's what I do. I price my products to make a profit. Uh, I sell. I sell on Amazon. Also, I've been selling for many, many years. 
Uh, okay. So I'm getting lots of different questions about pat platforms. Um, GR is asking, came in late. I'm not offering anything in particular. We're just having, we're having an e-commerce discussion. So you're welcome to, uh, to jo join in and ask questions. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about, uh, we'll have a lot of time at the end for Q and A. I want to get through some of these really critical items here. So biggest problem, and then later on we'll critique some sort of any, um, and we'll have a whole bunch of Q and A at the end. Um, okay, so e-commerce offers. So any, does, is anybody struggling with Facebook ads, with making profitable sales? Just type a yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So what, uh, <clears throat> two years ago, I started, I dived into the um, uh, video ads. I was finding that uh, I was not happy with the, the conversion rate of the products I was selling. So I started to do video ads. And what happened was, is as I went through this, it was really a, a complete change in my approach to selling on, with Facebook ads. Going from doing image ads to doing videos. So imagine, uh, Phoenix, I'm, I'm, this fourth quarter has been wonderful. Um, <laughs> so, okay, so I went for this change to going from image ads to video ads, and the and it completely changed the way I do my ads altogether. Um, I, yeah, I'll show towards the end. Towards the end, I'll show a video. I'll show one. I'll show you one of my videos for a product that's. I think it sold over two hundred thousand product and sales so in the last couple months I'll show it to you it's one I feel safe showing I've shown it at some other places too um, <laughs> um, yeah Scott since he wants to be independent of Amazon so I went from doing Facebook ads with images to video and so in that transition I completely changed my approach to, to the ad itself so under so it's really easy to set up a, an image ad. You set up the ad, put some ad copy in there, set up the product on your store, and and start going, start going on the uh, on your ads and and uh, and see if it works. Well, I started to see things that just weren't selling like I expected, and so I started testing video ads around two years ago. And so what happened? I had a, a one, well, actually a couple of the products, um, but the first one that re I really had big success with on a video ad, <clears throat> I just shot it on a um, on our coffee table in the living room, and you know that took some time to do that. It took me, you know, the, doing the first one, I I put my phone on a tripod to stabilize it. I mean, I, I have. Um, I do have a background, some experience with photography. So, uh, so I had a tripod I, and I bought a holder for my phone. I put it on a tripod and I started shooting it. And I'd spent a couple hours shooting the scenes that I would edit down into a video ad. Okay, so first off, actually creating the, the ad itself was now taking a lot more time. All right, so uh, since it took a lot more time, I thought, okay, I'm, I, you know, I thought to myself, hey, I put all this work into shoot doing these scenes for the video ad. I spent all this time, you know, hours of time editing, and I wasn't going to just, you know, stick that ad up and then just copy and you know do my same old template of uh, ad copy and the same old template for. Uh, a same old template that I did for, for my product page. So I actually spent a lot of time writing my ad copy and paying attention to the, the headline down below the video and really put a lot of care into the quality of the offer as a whole. That's the ad, the ad copy, and the product page. So then I had to set up the product on the store and I spent a lot of time writing that copy and and 
very well, doing a real good job describing the product, having good images, and so forth. So what I what I found that by actually testing fewer products, I had my success rate went. It was much better testing fewer products with higher quality, uh, higher quality ads, copy, and product page, and. So my success rate was much better that way versus testing, you know, dozens and dozens of things with image ads. Does that does that make sense? Does that, that make sense to everybody? You know, if slowing down and to, and putting quality in versus quick testing made a huge difference. So I have I now have I have an, one of those ads from two from almost two years ago is still running today. Um, so almost evergreen. Okay, I'm gonna answer a couple questions in here. Let me go back up here. I've got uh, doing video ads for clothing. I'm not sure it's the best format for clothing. Stomach. Yeah, clothing now is different. Apparel is a different psychology than than like pro, uh, physical products. So um, I've stayed away from clothing myself. So. But with clothing, um, it, you real uh, um, you need to be really kind of clever because the um, yeah the clothing may not work. So so things I found there's some ways of doing jewelry that I've seen work really well, but clothing I have not seen a a good way of doing that on video that really converts because it really the first couple seconds in the ad are really critical so um then let's go to the next so yeah uh scott says yeah scott you definitely want to learn how to do facebook because it, it's truly a marketing platform because they're targeting interests phoenix asked do you find professional videos work best or more raw amateur um i don't think it really i don't believe it matters whether it's professional or amateur, but I think it's extremely important that you know how to get your customer's attention. Okay, so let's think about let's think about the audience on Facebook. So put yourself in the, and you're probably one of these people too. You pull out your phone, and you go on Facebook and you look at stuff. Okay, and you're in. So let me go into Facebook, and I'm gonna. Let's think about so think about your audience when you're going in Facebook. Okay, so I'm going in and oh, I just one of my ads just popped into my own uh, timeline. So when I'm when I'm on Facebook, I'm on my you know my mobile device and I'm scrolling in here. What am I doing? What am I doing when? What am I doing when I'm scrolling in here? Okay, what am I doing? What am I trying to do when I'm scrolling in this news feed? Let me see who, what people say here. Looking, okay, looking for something, it's L L U V said looking for something interesting. Yeah, Brad says not shopping, that's right. Or Brenda says shopping, but L uh, L U V says the right thing. Looking for something interesting. Uh, okay, okay, Danny. Finding something interesting. Michael says finding something interesting. Looking for an ad that catches you. Well, I, Satish, I don't think we're really looking for an ad. We're just looking for something. Phoenix says looking for what triggers their dopamine. <laughs> okay, diversion, distractions. We're we are we are trying. We are looking for a distraction. We're looking for something to stop on. Now. That's as marketers, our ads need to be that that thing that gets their attention, and they want to stop and look at. Um, uh, and so that's what you want. Yeah, you know, we're looking for a good time. <laughs> um, yeah, I we want eye catching things. We want something to distract us when we're in here. Oh, uh, another one of my own ads popped up. Um, in the timeline, I, I, I'm the right target audience. Okay, 
so um, and so so we are looking to be distracted so we that first couple seconds of your video uh, needs to show you but you need to you need to get the attention of the Facebook users but you but it has to involve your product offer okay so you have to get there you don't want to just flash a bunch of uh, of um, you know fireworks or something like that just to get their attention you want to genuinely get their attention with your product or with what the products about okay so that's real it's really important so we want our ad to get to be the distraction so we, you know once they see our ad we want them to do one of two things we want them to either click through to our store and make the purchase or watch longer so if you can get the also get the people to watch longer that will lower your CPM so if you can genuinely keep people on there longer and of course you want to get them to click through so my video ads tend to be just under a minute long and that way I can use it on both Facebook and Instagram All right, so that is now I used to do them longer, but I, I I like to just use the same one. But if I can, if you can keep people watching longer, Facebook recognizes that you're helping that Facebook ha people have a good user experience. That's very important. So if you get people watching longer, Facebook that's one of the measurements that can help lower your CPM. Okay. Uh, any questions before we get to the next slide? <laughs> so Phoenix says, ah, that's how you kept your ad costs low. Yeah, yeah, that's my objective is to, is to really grab their attention. So if the more interaction that people have with your ad and, and genuine interaction, I, I don't run PPE ads. It's all website conversion. Um, uh, Nate writes, seeing lots of negative comments. I I don't see, I get very few of them. Okay. Um, I make sure that I keep my page keywords up to date. So neg any negative comments, I don't want them showing up. I don't want my VA to have to manually take them out. So that's how I handle negative comments. Um, Danny says, seems I'm all in with FB. Yeah, I've kind of, yeah. And yes, Phoenix. It makes, uh, okay, then you can create your video view audience, and I always test the 75%, 95%. And so uh, I, tend to, I tend to build two retargeting audiences. So I have one for the people that clicked and didn't buy, you know, clicked, add to cart or whatever and didn't buy, and then the people that, and then a second ad set for the um, video views. And then I do a, um, yep. Yeah. Uh, Okay, I, I'm getting a lot of questions about products. Work. Yeah, I mean, I'll be, all of you probably found out about me somehow through because you know I do some training. Yes, I do have all that in my training, but I this particular tonight we're we're not specifically talking about my training, but I do walk through people set up the store, set up your ads, doing videos and everything. So. Um, I don't test video versus image at all anymore. I just do videos. That's it. Okay. Um, Chinese New Year, that's in February. And everybody uh, seems to uh, let their um, go crazy about that. I don't worry about it. Okay. Um, then he says optimize stores for conversions. It's You optimize stores for conversions. Oh, okay. We're going to talk about. I'm going to critique some sites, Danny. That's part of what we're going to talk about. Um, I'm not going to. I'm not going to tell you to stop selling apparel, but you need to. I'm not. I don't sell apparel. So I've sold T-shirts. I did very well in 2012 and 13. I sold lots and lots and lots of T-shirts. But um, so I can sell. I know how to sell T-shirts. But I, I'm not going to tell you not to sell apparel. But if you don't, if you don't know how to sell apparel, then you're going to struggle making sales. 
Okay. <laughs> Brad says maybe we should stop asking so we can teach. So we'll go. Um, we'll go to the next thing here. Okay. Video ad. So uh, I'm, I'll show you. I'm, I'm going to wait till the end to show you the actual video. But I'll t let's talk about video ads right now. Uh, Joel, it was the. Um, it, I mean, it was one. I was selling. You know, the design. So it was the print on demand. Okay. Don't worry about Chinese New Year. Most places don't close for ver that long. Okay. All right. So we'll have a long Q as long as a Q and A as long as you want at the end or at least reasonable. Okay. Uh, I don't know what Clipman is. I have no idea. But I only do video ads that I I use my I use my phone to make them. So this this phone has sold millions of dollars of products. All right, because I've just filmed it with this on a tripod. So remember the video when you see a video ad, it's um, most of your audience is going to see it on their phone, and so it's small. I I like to I like the editing. I like to use um, Camtasia. Very si simple editing, nothing really serious. So the most important thing is framing your offer. So you make. I'll just tell you the common mistakes people make with video ads. I see it all the time. All right, so you need to have the product in the frame. Okay, that's one of the problems. I see people, they'll just have you know it off in a corner or something like that. Um, and you want to have it in the middle. I mean, it's great to you know, put a product on, you know, get a tripod, get a tripod, one that will can stand on the floor and 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 record something over a desk something you want a, a standard size tripod then you get a, a phone holder that fits on the tripod and then you so you want to have the stabilized for most almost all of your ads most everything will be stabilized because you'll need it to edit and I'll talk when I show you the video ad that I'm going to show you um, you'll see why it needs to be stabilized because you'll need to edit pieces out in the, within the first five seconds of the video i am i scrutinize every eighth of a second so if something if my hand moving in and out takes too much time i'll cut pieces of that out so it happens faster you want constant movement in the screen from start to the end of your video i never use shots that look so even if i take a have my video recording something and it's and nothing's moving n that's no good you need constant movement understand that when we when people are looking through their phone and they're scrolling looking for something to distract them they are they're very hyper focused on that so you can show things in a half a second, and the our, our eyes have the you know they, like they say a picture is a thousand words. They you can communicate a thousand words in a half a second with an image with a moving image. So it's real important to understand that you, it's like compressing time. I can explain a problem in two and a half seconds visually, and the solution in the next two or two and a half seconds visually. I couldn't explain it verbally, but I can do it visually. And if you do it right, you could it you could make if you do that early part correctly, it can make the difference between no sales and like uh, selling out the the manufacturer's uh, production capacity. Okay, I mean it can make an enormous difference. You can make millions of dollars on one product. All it takes. You're just one video away from something that could change your life. It's and, and it's really true. Okay, I have a a gentleman I've worked with for. He started with me about a year ago. You probably saw my email. He, he in November he sold eight hundred thousand dollars worth of product. It was all video ads. Um. Uh. Okay, so. The movement 
Okay, Brad asks, uh, Phoenix asks a good question. What's the movement since you're on a tripod holding and looking at the different angles? So uh, the, the phone is stabilized, but what I'm showing on, you know, on the table or on the ground or wherever or out in front, that's what's moving. So you want the product moving, not the camera moving around, but the product. I, I don't even pan anything. So I, most of my ads are just the camera stationary and then I'm doing like a demonstration on the table that I, most of my products are fairly small the ones that I sell so I look for things I like to sell things that are kind of small and they're, so they're easy less expensive to ship and they have a, a high perceived value so I can charge more for them and there it's something that I can easily demonstrate so if I have an item that I need, a, if I'm, it's like a something that is used in a room that's dark, it's really difficult to show something in the dark. If it's an item that's for underwater, it's hard to demonstrate something underwater. But I can, I can make it, you know, if something in a car, that's easy to do. I just put, set up my tripod in a car. If it's a cell phone accessory or something like that. Um, so I want the camera... 90% um, 90, 90 of the time on most of my video ads, it's just the cameras just stabilized. But I, but when when I do it, I'll, I'll have, I'll show the product in different scenes. So I'll I'll have a scene where I'm taking it from this angle, and I'll do something with it, and then I'll go maybe someplace else and do it somewhere else and do it at another angle. But the phone is stabilized, so I want to be able to edit that. So. Um, I don't like, and I don't like the whole moving camera thing, especially if you're seeing an ad on Facebook, you, you need, kind of need the background stabilized. And plus, once you have the phones, the recording device is stabilized and the product is moving, then, then that draws the eye to the product. And do you understand how important that, what I just said is? Uh, mine's, does everybody understand? You want the Facebook users to see, look at your product, not the shape, not the background. So, okay. First person view, but first person view often kind of moves around. Uh, it is kind of like per first person view, but I want the camera stabilized and I want all the movement to happen around the product. So the eye is drawn to the product and what the product does. Um, so any phone, any phone you have, any phone made in the last couple of years that shoots great video, just make sure the settings are on high definition and that you, when you, da when you get the f video file from your phone, use a cable to get the file. Don't email it to yourself. Okay. M you, to get the high resolution original f uh, video, you need to download it through a cable. Okay. All right. This is, yeah, mine's an Android. It's an S6 Edge. Okay. So we're coming up on an hour. Let's, let's move along here. Okay. Store critique. Um, okay. So let's do that right now. So let me pull up a store and then we'll, I'll go through all the, yeah, Phoenix. That's an excellent question. So some, somebody's thinking way ahead. I, I do tweak it. So, um, if you know how to adjust the lighting on your phone, definitely take advantage of that. So if you're, so I, I've had great success doing products like just on a wood table. So that typically like a light wood table is kind of a medium color. So the auto exposure works fine. Oh, and guess what? I don't use light boxes or anything like that. Ne I never have, never, ever, ever use light boxes. I like, do you see, uh, let me see here. Um, uh, okay. It, the What I use for lighting is, for my, for my video ads, I just use, I use desk lamps with incandescent bulbs. Okay, because they provide nice warm lighting. So the lighting you see on me right now is 
from just a desk lamp. I have it off on the side, and then behind me, I just, it looks kind of nice, but you saw that light right there. I thought it looked kind of nice having a little bit of backlight. So pay attention to your lighting. But I just use a desk lamp with an incandescent bulb. So I like to, I like, because some of the products that I demonstrate, I want people to be able to see the detail. So if I have a, a, a light box, sometimes the, you know, you miss out on some of the shadows and you miss some of the details. I, li I like shadows to a certain extent. Um, okay. So incandescent bulbs, I don't use the LEDs. This gives it a little bit more warm light and that's your phone kind of works better. I find that works better with, with, with a uh, incandescent bulb if you can still find them. Um, okay. All right. So let's go to the next thing. So let me find a... Okay, Danny, we're going to talk about uh, stores right now. I'm going to jump in. I think some people have sent me some stores to take a look at. Okay, I've got to I'll probably only get to a couple of these, but everyone's been real. If you've included your address, I'll send you some, I'll send anybody something here. I may even go through some of these stores. If it's uh, okay, 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 okay. Let me go to Tim is shared one here. Okay, so he said, okay, I can critique this. I'm going to switch this to, give me a moment to switch screens and take a drink of water. So let's go here. And I have to turn off sharing. And I'm going to share another one. Let me find it. Here we go. So you should all be able to see this. This uh, I'm only, yeah, uh, Thomas, I'm probably only going to get to a handful of these. So um, let's see here. OK, so the store looks good. So I hope this isn't a beautiful store that's not making any sales. Let me know. Let me know. Um, okay, you make sales. Okay, so let me. So when I run an ad, just to be clear for anyone that doesn't know, when I run an ad on Facebook, the ad is for a product, and so that video, when the someone clicks through my ad, it takes them directly to a product. So let's take a look at uh, a product here. So, um, and I'm just going to look up here. The Facebook pixel looks like it's working and it's got one of these things here. All right. So let me go to, let me, I'm going to go to this product right here. Okay. All right. So the most important thing about your store is that, I'm going to try going through your cart first. Uh, you know, I, I, my, I, my preference is, is just my preference, but I don't like the drawer carts. Um, so I usually just take them to the cart. That's, that's just my preference. <laughs> You've gone back and forth with it. So the most important thing is that it looks good on mobile. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to narrow the screen. I want to make sh I'm sure this looks okay on your screen. So I'm going to I'm simulating a mobile phone. Okay, so here's the things that I look for on a device when it's on mobile. Um, the the what I about the theme that you're running right now. The problem the problem I have with this is see from he, from where I'm pointing to my mouse to all the way down here, the really is wasted space. Now, I understand you need to have a menu, but this gray gap here and the gray gap here are, are useless. And this is something that when I'm trying out a theme, this is one of the first things I do is look at a product. Uh, I like, uh, I'll talk about, let me just go through this and then I'll talk about some themes that I, I like. 
Um, so th this, your logo is, is excellent. The size, um, my preference is to have the logo small and, and have it short. So short from top to bottom and wide left to right. This is perfect. But your theme is creating this space here. That's wasted space because I, my preference, it's not always possible. It's great if I can have the add to cart button above the fold, but that's not usually possible. Um, so, and uh, let's see here. So the one thing, one of the things that I'm checking for is, uh, is what I call a yellow brick road. Okay, so I want there to be a unique color in the store that only the, the path to completing checkout. So, so I tend in my stores, I use green for my add to cart button, for my checkout button, for my continue button, and all the buttons that take. So the only thing that's green in my stores is the, is the button that, that takes them to the path uh, of checkout, of completing their purchase. So I see here, I mean, this color here is kind of similar to it. And I usually, I know they have a hover color. I usually m make it a little closer so there's not too big of a difference between the hover and the non-hover. Okay, I, li I like the countdown timers, but I would set this to a, um, like to two hours, not 18 hours. Um, now the, in the theme, you want to make sure that it, this looks like it might be a, a light or a dark gray and not a pure black. And these three things down here, these are too small, much too small. Okay. Um, and when I sell a product, now I'm usually, I sell a lot of things that have some not, fa I usually don't sell fashion items, but I try to make these descriptions like this one more emotional. So whatever that would be, uh, you'd have to write that copy to match your target audience. And then I model that in here too. So let me go and click and three color, three choices. That's not bad. Okay. I don't like to have more than three choices if at all possible. Otherwise people have a, they can't decide what they want to buy. Uh, let me go to the next. And then this looks fine. I think this will look fine on a mobile. As long as this color here should be the same color here. This right down here. So yeah, I like to have those match. So I'm going to click uh, check out. And I'm going to go to uh, one second here. I'm just going to stop sharing for just one second. Make sure it doesn't auto populate an email address that I don't want. Okay, so let me go back and I'll share it again. Okay, so you should be able to see it again now. And so this has, and so this also, it looks like it matches from what I can remember. So I want all these buttons, the path, what I call the yellow brick road, that path to completing the checkout, should the buttons all should use a unique color. And it looks like you're doing that. So you have free shipping. That's I like that method. And this looks good. I mean, the checkout looks fine. Your your it looks good to me. Um. So. Uh, no, it doesn't look like you're just taking PayPal. You got credit card. So depending on your theme. Uh, so this is where have taking them to the cart might make a difference. So it depends on your theme. So if I go view cart, so in the, mo, many themes will allow you to put the paper. This is where I, why I like to use the cart rather than the drawer. Or if you can have the PayPal button on the cart and then see this is, uh, you've, yeah, this is, Okay, so your car, I don't like your cart. That, I wouldn't do this cart. Because your checkout button's way down here. I would, 
I would remove this button. I don't think I remember seeing a clear shopping cart. So I think people are going to accidentally click that. So this is the place where you'd want your PayPal button. So you, so you know, if you could remove the clear and make this a little bit minimized, and then have your PayPal and your proceed to checkout together down here, rather than having on the final page. Uh, speed is well. Look in the there's pingdom.com. You can find what's causing your. It may be some add-in or app, or your images are too big, or something. As far as speed. Okay. Uh, yeah, the menu. You have to add those things in here for the products and stuff. I I don't know this theme, but you should be able to add them in in here. Uh, okay, speed's fine. Okay, so let me look here. Okay, so that's my feedback on this. So let me go find another store. Um, and I'll see, now I'm going to get some cart abandonment email. So let me look at the next. Okay, next one here is this. To get back to the demo. Okay. Okay, so this is smart home equipment. So, okay, these are higher ticket items. So, no, a higher ticket item is going to take more work for sale. So, let's see so something like this so um, so you got high ticket items Wi-Fi indoor air quality monitor well, that's kind of cool so with a higher ticket item you want Okay, you're gonna sell these in a couple different ways. Uh, you're gonna some use some or like a tripwire to a product, something that's less expensive that you can get people into the store to get the kind of the traffic. So I know all these are on. Uh, you know, what's your? Let me see. Who is this? Let me see the email here. So this is Don. I don't know if is Don still here. Are, I mean, are, are your margins very? I mean, the electronics usually have low margins. Yeah, you could do Google Shopping. Um, well, I still find that see these common items like this. There's a lot of competition in Google Google Shopping. Um, and see, because I sell some of these too, and I know this is hard, difficult, and with the um, uh, and many of these electronics, and I don't think Don's here right now, so I'm just probably going to move on to the next one unless I can see he type something in here. Um, often these have very low margins. I mean, like Don, Don's here. Okay, okay. So you're dealing with ten to twenty percent. That's not a lot of money. So, so if if like uh, you know, like you're making like uh, fifty bucks on this. So if you're Say if you ran an ad for this product and your cost per purchase. Uh, oh, you you okay? So is this a local business or you just ship everywhere? Okay. Oh, okay. Well, that's totally different then. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that's a if you can install, then there's more money there. Okay. So four cities to twenty. Uh, LA, New York, Boston. Okay. This is the kind of stuff my brother-in-law pays people to do. Um, okay. <laughs> He's here in LA. Um, so, okay. So now you, in order to sell something like this, just like anything else, you need to ha know the reason why people are going to buy this. And, and that's what you do as your offer. Okay. Oh, okay. You said you accept Bitcoin. That's great. Okay, let's see your checkout here. 
and oh i i know where, who's promoted a lot of this stuff so i don't see your bitcoin checkout like i use the coinbase thing thingy so where's your bitcoin uh, where's your bitcoin checkout uh or is it on the next page okay just working out the kinks okay yeah uh yeah so coinbase and there's a couple others you can get a merchant set up um yeah and this is good with the yeah bitpay and a bunch of them um i'm i'm working them out too and in fact i <laughs> uh all the cryptocurrencies have been fun the last few weeks um just seeing I hope I hope they uh, doesn't crash soon before I sell sell them okay <laughs> and, yeah it's like like you know I'm looking at like the last you know week it's I've doubled my money okay yes exactly I gotta figure out when that is but it's done some really great growth I in fact I just bought some of the ethereum before it jumped and it's like I tripled my money it's, it's crazy crazy stuff uh, yeah um yeah <laughs> so so yeah i've yeah it's it's crazy stuff but i i want the i want the crypt personally i want the cryptocurrency to settle down and turn into a real currency and not be a, a, me, a method of speculation because i want it i want i'm so tired of credit cards it's so just horrible um yeah but nothing uh, no currency has any real backing okay I, i'd like to see a, a a good currency that us as e-commerce people can really use because i hate this whole chargeback situation with credit cards um yeah yeah one of the i agree with that okay so i'd like to have something that's just a good I want something that people can just use and buy things. And I, I want to be able to use it to buy things too. All right. So let me let me narrow this down. But um, let me I'm going to go back out to the store and just see what it looks like. So everybody, sh when they're setting up a store, should look at it from a mobile device. So this is um, right here is, looks good. You've got, this is really narrow. Um, the phone number here is really small. Um, you've got a lot of white space in here. You may not be able to do much about this because it, um, I, I don't use I, I don't use Amazon Pay. Um, I just stick with most people. Just use you know credit cards. Um, and, you know, credit, except credit cards and PayPal and and cryptocurrency. All right. So yeah, this is this looks good. I mean, there's a lot of white space here. I think with a product like this. Uh, this your text here is rather small so on, look at think about people they're outside and they look at your product and uh, I mean I don't my my eyesight is I don't need to wear glasses but if I was looking at this outside you know in daylight on my phone I would probably have a hard time reading this and I have good eye, eyesight so this is all is rather small okay so let me, I'm just going to go through the cart. Let's look at this quickly and, and move on to the next. So you've got your checkout. I like this going to the cart like this. Make sure some of your text is rather small. So I would definitely look at that. Continue. And this looks good. So you've got this popping up. And that's that's good. All right. So. Yeah, it's small. Some of this is small. So pay attention to those font sizes. So let me go to the next one. Let me go to the next one here. Um, okay. This is Lucille. I'm gonna, we're going to go to this one now. Okay, I'm probably going to do like one or two more. Uh, appar so apparel. So it, apparel is definitely a different cell. Um, image ads will probably be just fine if it's apparel. But it looks like you've got accessories also. You definitely, for these, you want video ads. So this is a, this is kind of neat, a USB 3.2, USB 3.0. Okay. So 
waterproof flash drives. So, I mean, there's this is an interesting product, but I don't know if is this. Let me let me just pick one product. Oh, it's for a MacBook Pro. I don't know from. Oh, that's interesting. You've got the selection. That's that's. I use it probably using Dropify. I'm guessing. Okay, so that goes into oh thunder. It's Thunderbolt. Okay, well, let's just look at this. I, I wonder if okay. This is this is like really nice here. It's really s small. You're showing off what the product does. We can look at the different images. Now the second image doesn't really tell me anything. I would put this as the last image. And this is, I use this as the second one. And, and that's fine. Okay, and that's, oh, I see. You've got one, uh, this, you're, this looks like a nice theme. There's a little bit of a gap right here. This, I mean, this is nice and big here. This is, a little I'd probably go one size up from these other than that this looks good it's now it's a black button I tend I, I don't recommend a black button pick a color um, usually it's it's like the Amazon gold color or green so add to cart let's see what it looks like it's a slide so you see how the so add to cart is black and I click I click it and I go to checkout and this is now a, a golden color um, so this is what I mean about keep having a consistent color to take you to the completed checkout. But this is really good because the checkout button is within the fold. I think it will show up. See, this is respond. Look how responsive this is. This is really terrific. The checkout button is always above the fold. This is really really nice. So this is a really nice drawer. I would I would keep this drawer, but just change that color. Let's go to the next page. And now, of course, this is the standard Shopify checkout. And um, I don't use Amazon Pay. And then your colors. So you're back to your, it's a different color. So you've gone from black to gold to black. Um, so I pick a color that you can use on all of them and make it consistent. So I'm always looking for something that will reduce some friction to, into the checkout. So other, otherwise, this looks, looks great. So let me do one more. Okay. Um, yeah. It's a, uh, is is this helpful to, to everybody? I just say yes or no. Am I giving? Am I telling you? Is this stuff that you you need to know? Okay. Okay. Everybody's saying yes, 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 yes. Great. I want to make sure everybody's here. We're keeping um, like the vast majority of the people that started are still here. So that's a good sign. Okay. So let's go to the next. Uh, let me find another one. Okay, let me pick this URL. Okay. And, and let me get back over here. So I'm going to put this one in. This will be the, I'll do this one and then we'll move on to the next thing. All right. So it looks good on the home page, but the most important thing is the products. So let me just pick a product shop. Uh, okay. See, I usually don't put pop pops pop ups. That's just my preference. I know. So let's go jackets. Let's pick a product and look at it. And then uh, so. Now I'm going to narrow this, and I'll scroll up to the top. So this is nice. It's real small up here, so it doesn't take a lot of space. Uh, so that's like on a mobile. So I can click on those, and it moves. And this is definitely very readable, and we can select the sizes. Uh, I, I would recommend a kind of a more sol uh, darker color. This is kind of light. And also increase the font size of the of the wording here. So I my preference is to have it very quite big inside of the button. 
So I'd recommend a darker color. This is rather light and doesn't contrast enough with the white. Um, there's not much of a description here, but that's that's up to you. But this definitely is a nice size. I can, it's very readable. Okay, and so let me add to cart, see what it looks like. So it takes me directly, okay, this is taking me to the cart. And then uh, the same thing with this button. So it looks like you have uniform colors for your buttons, but this is still, I would recommend more of a solid color. So look how PayPal is very solid. Now I would recommend again, if, you're, if you do have a checkout button near PayPal, don't match these colors. You want a color for your checkout to be to be very different from PayPal. So maybe a green button instead of that. But any any way you go about this, you want it to be a completely different color than the PayPal background. Uh, and so let me click checkout. And now you've got the the color of the borders here. Is that kind of that golden color, it needs to contrast more. It needs to be darker. And then, so just be careful about the button colors. But other than that, it looks really good. Um, let me go back to the screen. I think that's going to be the last one I go through. Okay, Steve says, I love the fact that your tips insights are so sound in principle, mostly because they work. Um, thanks. Yeah, I just want them to be... Um, you know, I, I know I buy stuff online all the time and I see lots of stores all the time. So just make it, you want to make it easy for people to, to check out and, and give you money. That's what, that's what you want. You want it easy for them to give you money. All right. So we kind of went through, let me switch these screens and I'll switch back to the thing here. And so we've kind of gone through this yellow brick road where that's a uniform colors, tested mobile, checkout test, cart handling, white space. Those are all my big pet peeves with, with stores. Um, Scott says, thank you for sharing your knowledge. I know that I need to move into marketing outside of Amazon. I'm slowly learning. Hope that we can work together. Yeah, I hope we can work together too. Um, okay, so let's see what's next. I forgot what's here. All right. Um, all right, so I want you to, do, so as you see ads show up in Facebook, do your own critiques. So go look at, click through an ad and look at a store. Op, maybe set up a separate email address so it doesn't get, so when you opt into their, to their email list, and so you can see what kind of marketing companies do. Now, if they don't do any email marketing, well, then you know that too. Uh, the abandoned cart. So add something to the cart and go through the checkout. Enter in your email address and then just but go to the point to the where it asks you to enter your credit card and then abandon the cart. And then that way you'll know if they have an abandoned cart sequence or not. And you can see the emails that they send out. This is a good practice to to see what other businesses are doing. So especially important, say if you're selling a product in a particular niche, go find your competitors and do this. Go opt in, see what kinds of emails they send out, see what kind of abandoned cart sequences they send, and just look at, you know, etc. Look at other things, you know, how they present their products too, all right? Um, any questions on that part? Um, yeah, see what kinds of payment methods they have. You know, things like you saw the the uh, the Bitcoin, the cryptocurrency, other kinds of things. I when in my checkouts, I try to make it as simple as possible. I don't, uh, as someone is is going through the checkout process, I don't want the customer to to need to make too many decisions. So maybe two payment methods, maybe at the most three. But I, if you offer too many choices, people, 
you know, their brain will just go fuzzy and you'll have more abandoned carts. Keep it, keep it real simple. Um, let me go to the next one. All right. So now I am going to, after this part, I'm going to show you my video ad and, uh, and, and Ramsey's got a good comment here. So, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to answer this. So my res res resolutions, I need to do better with my email. I'm not doing, I'm not leveraging my email address and my email list as good as I could. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with that. Um, I'm not sending out enough emails and I need to automate more. Uh, launch more products. So I, my goal is to launch one product per week and I don't, I'm not hitting that. Quality, so the, this third item about the quality of the offer, that's the ad, the video, the, the product page, and so forth, are, are what I'm, uh, I find the more I put work into the quality of the offer as a whole, the landing page, the ad targeting and everything, uh, the better they sell. So that is, that this when I say more, it just sounds like a vague term, but this is how I counter the higher CPM on Facebook is by when I put a better offer together, then it counteracts the CPM cost. I know I don't mostly drop ship. Okay, so, uh, oh, you know, there's something I wanted to let me, oh, oh, I don't. No, I, what I do is I only, I use drop shipping for testing purposes. So when I have a winner, then I bring them in and I uh, have them fulfilled in the United States. All right. So I, so, okay. So let me, I'm going to share something with you that I haven't shared with anybody. Um, okay. And this has to do with fulfillment. So what I, so again, I'm just going to repeat that again. I test with AliExpress and then I bring them in in bulk. And so I can often get a much better price. I don't use FBA. No, I've, I use a local warehouse that I've been using for like 10 years. So uh, that's what I use, but I am, uh, I'm, China is great. I, don't, I, I think AliExpress is a great place to find products. Uh, but I just not going to do drop shipping because I've, to, I, <laughs> I could easily sell out, uh, the and I've done this where I've sold out the all of the say somebody has something and you know 20 sellers on AliExpress are selling it I've run into this uh, when I when I would just drop ship but even when I'm testing I've sold out everybody's product you know usually by the time I start importing it I've probably sold five to seven hundred of an item okay so uh, Phoenix I don't get I know, knowing my target audience, I don't get stuck with stuff. I could always use the, I, uh, I've never been stuck with stuff. There's always a way to, to move it. Um, okay, so, and that, this is, I'm going to type this in right here. This is, I use a fulfillment center here in California, but they only work with uh, much larger, um, large, very, very large volume. So I'm going to share with you. So, okay, before I type this in, this is a fulfillment company, a fulfillment service that has excellent pricing and they do a really, really great job. And I'm starting to move more and more product over to this company. Uh, now, I, I really like this company. One of the reasons why is because he is one of my um, mentoring students. He started with me about a year ago and he, um, they have, Basically, you had a, a biz, already had an existing business. No, it's not dollar fulfillment. You've never heard of this one. I think this is the first time I've been the beta test. So I've been using this company for a while. They're brand new. You've never heard of them. So this is the first time anybody's heard about them. So you want it, it, only contact them if you're serious, if you actually have product for them to handle. They do a really good job. He is one of my mentors. Uh, one of my uh, students in my mastermind, after uh, uh, having his own, he had 
plenty he had warehouse space because of an existing business and he was fulfilling his own products from it with his own employees for the last year and so he now he's opening up as a very large warehouse to other other things so here it is uh, I'm gonna type the URL so it's mint fulfill and mintfulfill.com so I will type that in the chat here let me get the let me get the whole thing here Okay, so yeah, this is the first uh, announcement of this. I'll type it in the chat. So go ahead and bookmark it right now. And and Jim does a great job. He's got, um, so he can connect up with your store through ShipStation or a CSV file. Uh, however, you know you can work to put something together. So it's a real good. Um, uh, does he does a great job? And uh, they're in Utah, so there's you know they're not centrally located, but they're not on one of the coasts. So I think Dollar Fulfillment's in Idaho. So it's, it's only uh, you know it's in the next state. So that's what I like to do. I te test with AliExpress and then uh, import and then scale. So scale the business. Okay, scaling. And so you'll see, I think you'll see it if you, if you go to the website. So fulfillment, uh, at, you talk to, if you want to, uh, okay. So if you'll have to talk to them, see what other services they'll do. I'm sure they'll, they can do something. So it, ideally, if you're going to private, depends on, there's a lot of options with private labeling. Yes, Simon, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. So actually in every slide, there's the application URL to apply for the coaching. I, that's, I, I, we're in here now an hour and a half and I've, that's the first time I've mentioned that. So there it is. Um, so the, uh, for private labeling, depending on what you're doing, uh, in many cases, it's, if you want something custom packaged, um, it, it's less expensive to do it, have it done in China rather than in the United States. But if all it is, you need to have a sticker put on something, I'm sure you could work something out. Um, that's between you and the fulfillment place. So I don't, uh, personally, I don't get, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I just want to make sales. So I don't get worked up too much about private labeling. It's important if you're to brand things in, in Amazon, but not not necessarily with um, a Facebook ads. Okay, so the last item here, I, mean, I started my business using, into, when I started my website, I started using Google pay-per-click back in 2003. And boy, that was, that was, a, that was like printing money, but it's not that way anymore. In, uh, in, in, uh, in Google. Google got expensive around 2009, to, well, about 2010, 11. It started getting expensive. That's when I started doing social media. All right, so I'm gonna go quickly through, we're gonna watch the video last, the video ad. I've kept you all here, but I wanna go through, I'm gonna quickly go through, I'm gonna try to answer some things real fast. So yes, um, the, oh, themes. I like shop shoptimize. I'm experimenting with that. I like it. Um, shoptimized. They don't have. I've never found a theme that has very good support, and they're one of those. But I like the theme, and it it's very flexible. Um, okay, so let me go through here. Yes, uh, non Facebook ad. Okay. Oh yeah, let me go non Facebook ad. So probably. Price of the theme, I don't know what Shoptimized, I can't remember what it, the theme is. Shoptimized, shop, uh, let me find it. S H O shop. D E D, Shoptimized. Okay, Shoptimized, here it is. And let me go here. There it is. Okay, so let's see. There it is. There's the theme. And actually, 
Okay, um, let me, I'm going to put this in the slide too so it's, it shows up. Um, so theme, um, I got to find a place to put it. So here's the theme, the theme URL, just so the replay gets it. I don't, I want, don't want the replay people to miss out on this. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't, you, I don't set up stores in, in WordPress. Um, drop shipping from USA suppliers is, is wonderful. It's wonderful to do that too. You're not, AliExpress is not the only game in town. There's just go and Google. You can find places. Okay. I'm going to go through quickly answer questions that are in here. Uh, okay. Don't, um, start, uh, Ramsey says I've started creating funnels inside my Shopify store. What are your thoughts, please? I'm doing that. I do. I'm actually, I'm, I kind of got away from doing funnels and now I'm starting to do them again. Okay. So I'm actually using click funnels and using in, an integration to bring my orders from click funnels into Shopify for fulfillment. All right, because I love I love ClickFunnels. I've been I actually started using ClickFunnels before I ever did Shop Shopify. Okay, uh, Scott says. Uh, okay, Danny says on behalf of everybody, thanks for all you do. Um, you're doing great. Steve says love the fact. Okay, I read that. Okay, thanks, Steve. Scott, Timothy, Ramsey, Jason, Michael, Nate. Thanks for all your feedback, Danny. Um, okay, I answered the themes. On a mobile, do people actually swipe to see images or best to have image? You know, I've never checked. Um, I just have, I put, I actually do have images in the main body down low as well as the images at the top. So depending on the theme, you may have a limit. So I like to have a lot of content for the product. And so I'll, I'll, stuff at the you know the bottom of a bunch of images i you know because it's nothing nothing worse than being interested in a product and not being able to see what it looks like so i'll stuff any extras down at the bottom but they've got to be good images um okay tim i saw your message about the drawer uh let's see ethereum may be the one okay blockchain econ would be awesome yeah it would be great to have some stuff yeah, I like the cryptocurrency. I'm I just like to get away from the whole. I think the the whole the whole chargeback thing and fraud and stuff. If they really put their, th there should be an easy fix to that. And I think this is just horrible that we have that pro even have the problem. It should be able to with this day and age, we should be able to fix that. Okay. Oh, I didn't ask about more non FB ads. Okay, so I do also do in stream ads on YouTube. And in-stream ads are also a good place. It's a little, little different. It's it's different and the same at the same time. But we, we kind of run out of time with that. But I've I've done in-stream ads for a long time. And for my high-ticket items on Amazon, I rank videos for them. So things that are high-ticket and have a good margin, I I rank videos. It's actually you can pay. Uh, you can use. Um, the ads platform on Google to rank videos, just get cheap pay for cheap views. That does a lot. Okay. Also do um, retargeting like perfect audience ad roll for like proven products. That way you've got retargeting on all platforms. So you could do the banner, do the in stream. So if you're doing a video on for Facebook, you can also take that. You don't in Facebook, you want it square in Google. You want it to be horizontal. Uh, and then you can do banner ads in Google also, and there's lots of app banner platforms. So when you've got a, pro a product that you're scaling, then start putting things in other platforms. Um, so uh, Google has retargeting as well. They call it remarketing. You can, um, but I, the, I love the targeting inside of Facebook. The targeting in for videos, I find if you I do direct placements. If anybody has done anything with uh, Google video ads, you'll know what I'm talking about. I find the direct placements work best rather than using keywords or something or, and retargeting with video is great too. So there's lots of great platforms. I like, uh, Google's great. You gotta do it the right way. Okay, like anything else. And you have to, uh, actually in my, in my coaching, uh, I do have 
a whole section on doing uh, video uh, Google in stream ads or how, and how to set up the whole get everything set up and use the ads manager it's a it's a, a bit of a beast um, okay okay let's see yeah, Trent made a comment about an ad potential customers want to you don't need necessarily need a real person um, you need to do what's appropriate for the product so if I'm showing off this really cool flashlight that I'm not going to show you because I might want to sell it. Um, I'm going to demonstrate it, but it's so it's going to have my hands in it. So it depends on what the product is. Um, so this is this now sits on my desk at home, and so we have rabbits. And it's, when it's dark outside, I take this flashlight. Now it's my favorite. I take it take it with me everywhere, and I haven't even I haven't started I haven't made a video of it yet, so I'm not going to show it off yet. Okay. Then he says, any PDF tutorials? Um, yeah, just what I've done here, and you'll see in the replay. And I do some of that in my coaching. Um, let me see what else. Chinese New Year, sometime in February, right? I don't really remember. So with Chinese New Year, if you've got a winning product that's selling, like, I, I mean, when I've been testing, I'm te excuse me, I may need to sneeze here. Um, All right, so, um, I, so I'm testing a product. I'm testing it with drop shipping from China, and so I, I would contact my so the supplier I'm I'm currently using for that product I'm testing, and I'll ask them when they're going to be closed. And I've been surprised to find that many of the pe companies I've worked with are may, are maybe only closed a week or you know not even a whole week, and some of them are using fulfillment centers. Um, also, I mean, there's some AliExpress products you can get from their USA warehouses also. So there, I don't worry too much about that. Oh, on the subject of holidays. So if you are right now, if you're selling something that's drop shipping from China, of course it takes forever. But remember, uh, if you've stopped your ads, start them up like two or three days before Christmas. And because people will be, um, sitting around at home looking at their phones while they're with their family and buying a lot of stuff Christmas Eve unfortunately I mean it'd be better if they spent time with their family but they're gonna sit around and look at their phone and and buy stuff so Christmas Eve Christmas Day and the day after Christmas and then New Year's and then things kinda get back to normal at the end of January just one second excuse me All right, needed it. It's my nose there. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Lookalike audiences are great. I have my own way of doing those. And scaling ads is is uh, something is, what can I say? Are, is scaling ads in some respects. Uh, it just works. I aggressively scale. I find that Facebook is very receptive, uh, responds very well to a, aggressive ad scaling. And I, it's just not something I uh, do slowly. It's something I do very f fast. Okay. Uh, let me see if I, I'm just trying to find any questions that I haven't answered real quick. And okay. Let's see, they asked a question about. Uh, program help me I sell clothing so um, so you, clothing is a different sell so it's not like selling a flashlight that kind of does something for somebody you do need to do your ad in a way that people are and in a way that people see your ad and they they imagine themselves wearing the product themselves things that Things that you can promote on Facebook that have a unique reason why they should buy it work the best. Just let me put that out there. That when you have a a, a reason for them to buy it that's emotional, that and if you can apply that to clothing, you can apply that to print on demand. Those are the things that that customers go crazy for. Oh, Daddy writes. I hear Facebook ads are just going to cost. Much more in the future and less reach. Maybe try to get free organic traffic. Well, good. Uh, well, Google changes 
the algorithm all the time too. So well, the, I, I, I know how to do SEO also, but I choose to do paid ads because I can take something that's selling, you know, say I'm selling one or two items a day when I prove that it, it actually converts. I can take something where I'm making, you know, $40 a day and turn it into $2,000 a day within a, within a week or two or less, or it just depends on what it is. I can't do that with SEO. And so you still, you could say, okay, SEO is free traffic. It's not free. Facebook ads is, you pay for it. So SEO, you pay for it with all the tools you buy, all the time you spend. So time is money. So both of them cost money in my, so time is money. They both are ex cost money. There's no such thing as free, free traffic. You pay it one way or another, pay for it one way or another. Both platforms change. Uh, Google changes, Facebook changes. Just master something and then leverage that. So pick one thing, master one thing, one traffic method first. <clears throat> and then, because the, the market, when you create an offer for an, a paid ad, you still need, if you're doing SEO, you have to create that offer too. You have to understand how to sell a product online. Scott says the idea of independence from relying solely on Amazon is a great point because uh, when you build a business on Amazon, you're building a business on somebody else's platform. So Shopify, if you're doing e-commerce, say if Shopify went out of business tomorrow, it, it would take me... 48 hours, I'd be back up in business because I, uh, I, I have my email list. I, I have, I know what all my products are. All I have to do is set up on another platform and I'd be ready to go. Okay. So, and I've had that happen. I, I, one of the, the stores I was on in the mid, uh, 2000s, like 2006 or so went out of business. Um, I had to, change real fast and uh, no problem Let's just move on to another platform um, okay I think I've kind of gone through most of these so now I'm going to go back down to the bottom and see what questions are here okay I'm going to go from bottom to Phoenix asks what platforms uh, you know I usually just hook up I'm not using Clavio right now I'm actually using Infusionsoft so uh, I just have a lot of flexibility with that. Um, but Clavio is one that is really well suited for an e-commerce platform. Uh, Clavio is, is more expensive. If someone's just starting out, I would recommend something like MailChimp because you can't, there's some automation in there. Also, I, I really like abandonment protector. It's easy to get a store up and going and have abandoned cart emails. I've just always liked that product. Uh, Danny says uh, he wants to do woodworking tutorials, downloadable course. You can certainly sell digital products on any of these platforms. Okay, if you've got courses, you can sell any of these on a on a course. Uh, if I have a store with over five, Jason says a store with over five thousand products. I'm guessing you would recommend to get rid of about. No, just leave them all there. But when you run an ad. You, the ad is going to take them to one, a single product. It's not going to take them to the home page of your store. The ad, just leave all the products there. Scott says, asks about Clavio. Clavio is a automation, is an email automation program. Um, uh, okay. Oh, the only add-ons that I think, I like Trackify to handle the pixel. I like um, a Benamit protector. I don't uh, ship station on some of them. Yeah, I'll show the video. Just give me a moment. I'm going to answer these questions. Uh, yeah, and so yeah, Danny, you can sell digital products too. Certainly can. And Ganty is right. SEO is not free. You pay with your time. And a lot more uncertain, and that is absolutely true. Phoenix says once you test an alley, how do you figure how much to order? I usually start with a couple hundred. It just depends on, usually, I, you know, I've sold, th you know, anywhere from three to 700 of an item before I order in bulk. Um, I'm not sure what 
Dan, I'm, uh, Danny's okay. What's your best? Ganty, my best scaling methods is I start, I scale a budget scale. I, I budget scale aggressively. And let me go here. And the method to, uh, is to maintain profitability. So you're constraining Facebook from making sales at a higher cost for purchase. Uh, L LUV, when looking for the right target, should I use audience? I use audience insights. However, audience insights is broken right now. So you'll need to use um, Google a lot to find like the magazines or things. So uh, magazines, stores, brands, and competitors, and then check in Audience Insights to see if there's a thing. Everybody wants to see the video. One second here. Thank you for the pointers. I like Trackify. Yeah, that's the one I like. <clears throat> any cheaper ads in Facebook, if you can do it right in, uh, it, just like any other platform, it's not about cheaper, um, but it's being more effective. So my focus on quality of the offer as a whole um, brings me back down to a price that is like like it was uh, two or three years ago. So it, I don't worry about the cost. What I do, now I'm focusing on being a better marketer, and that brings the cost of my ads down by being better at what I'm doing. But there's also in, YouTube in stream ads. They have their own challenges as well. It's a different platform, different uh, thought process on some of that. Um, 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 let's see here. Good. Okay. Um, okay. Let me see the last few couple of questions here. Then I'll, we'll show the ad. Uh, there's no real shot. You use the apps that you need. Uh, there's no, I don't think there's any, and use what you need. Um, too many, there's too much importance in my opinion on, that's what I hear from a lot of people that are new is they're asking what apps that they need. So you need to use only those that you need. I just talked to someone uh, this week who is struggling to make their store work, and they're spending over two hundred and fifty dollars a month on on apps. Okay, so just use what you need. So what you need is a good product to sh to 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 sell, and a good video ad and good ad copy. That's what you need. You definitely need the pixel uh, stuff like that. Um, but I like uh, Trackify, Abandonment Protector, and you use whatever you need for the shipping. I use Dropify for my connection to AliExpress. Wonderful program. It, it's not free, um, it, but uh, you can use Oberlo if you want a free one, but um, Dropify is wonderful. Um, Simeon says, extremely great content, Frank. First time here, and you are totally different than others. Thank you very much. I don't, I'm not, that's, I'm just telling you how I, I do it. You give content real value and not offers and offers. We'll fill up the form if it's an appointment. Okay, great. Yeah, I'd love to have you in my coaching. And then this is, in the coaching, we do uh, two, like, uh, calls a week. And, like, as an ongoing basis, and it's all, everybody gets to talk. We talk like this on the calls. I go over ads, I go over videos and products and stores. Um, so you're getting a little peek of kind of how things work there too. Okay, somebody is asking what the pixel is. So the pixel, uh, and, and I will going to show the video real soon. Uh, pixel is, so think of Facebook as an, an artificial intelligence. And so what the pixel is, is a little piece of code from the Facebook artificial intelligence that you put in your store. And so now Facebook gets to monitor what people are doing on your store. And that sends, it feeds back data to, to, to Facebook. So now I'm running an ad and I wanted to optimize for purchases. So I want traffic that's going to spend money on my store. So as people buy more product on my store, the pixel feeds back the data of the type of people that are purchasing. And Facebook tries to send people that are like, like the people that are already buying. So it, what, it's a feedback 
loop where it it uh, it optimizes the ad for uh, to bring more like traffic more traffic that's like your buyers uh, budget scaling is what I basically do is when I when I want to sell more I, it's the ad sets working well maybe I'll start an ad at 10 or 20 dollars a day I'll start it off and if it starts if it starts converting and it's profitable then I'll, I'll maybe I'll, I'll I'll double it at least double it after three or four days and then I'll just continually do that and just of course monitoring to make sure that it's profitable um, and then oh and then and then that's pretty much it's fairly simple so Thomas asks general store versus niche store uh, when you're starting out I recommend a general store just so you can test anything realize that uh, and I recommend that that way you're not painting yourself in a corner that you're in one niche and now you can't sell something else. But it, just like Amazon's a general store, they're successful. You can have successful general stores. And then if you have, find that a handful of products that are in one niche, then then either can then may do a niche store when it works out. Okay, I'm going to show you the video now. All right. Uh, okay, so. Uh, okay, so I need to stop this screen here, and I need to stop sharing screen, and then I'm going to pull up the video. So I've got to find, pull up the video, and, and, okay, I've shown, I've shown this. Let me make sure I've got the right one, the right version here before I show it. Okay, I think this is the right one. Uh, let me make sure. I gotta make sure I get the right version here. Oh, okay. There, I got the right one. Okay. Okay. So let's see if this starts sharing. Uh, let's see. Okay. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna need to. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. I'm just glad I didn't lose anybody here. So what I'm going to do now is I need to minimize some windows and then I can share the screen with you. Make sure I don't close anything that I don't want. Okay. 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 Just give me a moment and then yeah, Demio won't let me just share the video in its own screen. So I have to. All right, so let's do this. I like your old, oh, Danny says, like your old windows in the back and those white chairs are nice. All right, so. Uh, this is a house, this house was built in the 20s. So it's an old house in Pasadena. And uh, yeah, we really, my wife and I, we really like the old homes. Um, and yeah, they, we, um, yeah, let's see here. Let's go to the, we'll share this. Oh, I gotta minimize, get this back down here. So now I'm gonna share my screen and Okay, so now you should be able to see the screen. And right here, oh, I hope I didn't close to something. Okay, all right, so now I'm gonna bring this to the foreground. You should be able to see 
the um, the video. Can you everybody everybody can see the video, right? I'm going to start it from the beginning. Just somebody say yes if you can see it. Okay. Um, so you can see it square. I've now I've shown this at a, a whole bunch of events. So um, now please, don't copy my product. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, I'm going to start it from the very beginning, and then we'll uh, let it go. And then. You can see everything moves really fast. There's movement all the time. Okay, let me get back to the screen. And then, okay. Audio's back. So you saw the video, no video? No video? Yeah, it's me, it's probably having, oh, that's right, let me, I need to share the screen again. Okay, let me. I'll play this again. Okay, so can you see the video now? I'll try it again. Okay, so I'll play it again. It's just under a minute long. No, no sound. I, there is sound on the video, but I uh, turned off the sound right now. So that way the... It, it's a little bit uh, – Demio's having a hard time streaming all this at the same time. So there is background music, but there's – so most people – uh, Phoenix it would sell both of what? I don't know what you – I'm only selling one thing here. Oh, I don't sell the charger. So the, the – it's a – what? Okay, so cell phone – most – Androids made in the last two or three years support wireless charging. So I this pad is a magnet and it has a built-in wireless charger. So it holds the phone and also charges it without a wire. So you see what I'm doing? I know that it's this is not the ideal presentation because you're seeing it a little smaller, but I'll just start it again. You see how fast everything happens? Okay, so it's a it's a magnet holder that has a built-in charger. And I do this all, it's all done in Camtasia. All the editing, the video is I since I use my phone for the um, for the you know the demonstration, I used uh, my wife's phone to video videotape it. That's that's all it is. So you don't. It's you have what you need to make a good video. It's just a matter of doing it. And in fact, you, you're going to go through some learning experiences doing this. I, I mean, I this is was my second try making this video. The first time I did it, I thought I had all these great uh, scenes to edit together, and then I noticed that there were reflections on e every scene. I had to. I, I I didn't know it until I went in to do the editing. So you're going to learn a lot of things about doing this. So so is that clear? Do you see, I mean you could see the very beginning. I really tried it. It's like compress a lot of things in that right at the very beginning. And in my I actually have. Like I think I want to say four or five videos in my mentoring and training on how to do this. There's a lot of there's a lot more to. I mean, this is the result of kind of putting it all together. But there's a, definitely a method for putting together the the um, the callouts and everything here too. Uh, I write. I have I have some I have some training to do that too. So. You, it really when you're selling a product you want to make the people don't buy logically so to make good sales with the um with the video you need to hit on an, something emotional and that's so i i write my ad copy before i do my video because i have a, me a methodology to this where the ad copy so I need to understand why the person 
you know, what benefit or solution is there first before I even shoot the video, because that will make the my text callouts are going to be based on the ad copy that I've come up with, and then I'm going to use the ad copy in my ad and use model and mold that ad copy into the product page. Okay. Uh, okay, so that's about it. So that's how how that's put together. We still have started off with like sixty plus people. Most of the most of this we had around fifty, and we're down to forty one. So we're now on two hours. So, um, any other questions? Let me put turn my camera back on. Uh, and sure, I'll just okay. Um, yeah, the you have to go. So there's different. I've got different things from in my training. It just depends. Some of this depends on where you are. So in so you go through the application process, and that you know during the application process, there's different options. Uh, depending, you know, of course, one is going to be more expensive than the other, but I've got different options, but then you'll definitely find that out through the, um, through the application process. We'll ma make sure that it's the right thing that fits you. Um, let me get my screen sharing up here again. Okay, hold on. I'm just one. Okay, there should be nothing shared right now. Okay, I'm just trying to get this back in here. Okay, so now we've got the screen back up. Okay, Danny says uh, overwhelmed. Okay, good. I'm glad you got some of that out of there. You know, you, you can s test things. Danny's not working a job. Yeah, you definitely need to have money to spend. So uh, I when I started my first e-commerce business, I actually went – I started it up. I was in between consulting jobs, and I kind of had the e-commerce selling things, but it wasn't working uh, super really all that well. But the, um, uh, but I and it wasn't enough to support my family. So I actually went back. I I put kind of put my e-commerce business on hold. I didn't even. I didn't close it down. I kept it running, but I did a um, uh, and then I didn't have okay. So I went back and did a six month consulting job. Then I came back and I did it full time. Um, non Facebook ads. So other platforms, uh, Google, ad, ad roll, other other platforms. You know, there's Google. You know, the video in stream ads are also good. So I need to. I've been doing Google for a long time. I need to start. I've been kind of had my head in Facebook for the last four years and and not not really put as much time into the other platforms. I still have done some, but not as much as I should. I started my first e-commerce business. I grew it with face with Google ads back in the early two thousands through about two thousand eleven. Um, I did Brad, um so you know do, it, it's it's based <laughs> Uh, you really don't know. It was just such a, so, I mean, I, I didn't, you don't know. I just, so I, I don't pick products based on, I thought it was a cool product. So I thought, well, Hey, if I think it's great, it might be a good product. I just test it. Yeah. So if it's something I can demonstrate, I can clearly demonstrate it. Then it, then I'll tr give it a try. So I'll test it. I have five e-commerce stores plus Amazon. So I have um, currently two general stores and three niche stores. Okay, so I have I have a team of people in the Philippines that help me run that you know run the day-to-day -day operations. All, I just do marketing. That's all I do. Marketing and product selection. Um, I like to be able to sell something for at least thirty, thirty, like twenty, thirty dollars. 
but it all depends. I just want to look at the numbers to make sure that I can make a make a really good profit. I mean, if I can sell something for sixteen dollars and it only costs me four dollars, I mean, I'll do that. I mean, you have to have something that has a a high perceived value so I can make a good profit. There's not uh, people have to ship it back to me if they want a refund. And in some cases, if they complain uh, about something, I'll just refund them. If it's if it's not worth the trouble of going through a whole exchange and stuff, I'll just give them a refund and say, uh, you know, if you want it, just order it again. I, I, I want to do things to minimize my time. So I don't want to spend too much time on inexpensive items. More expensive items, certainly the, our, my customer service will handle, spend more time on that. Okay, Philippines, I use, um, uh, what's it called? Um, ph, uh, online, onlinejobs.ph. And so I have VAs that do, I've got, you know, people that handle my uh, bookkeeping and customer service. They answer my phones. And then I have, you know, if they're overloaded, I have, uh, it'll roll over to an answering service. So I, you can call one of my numbers on one of my stores and you can reach somebody 24 by seven. Uh, Mario, what do you mean by customer relationship priority? What do you mean by that? Um, so with hiring VAs, it's, uh, I mean, if you've never done it before, uh, you know, you have to, um, develop some training for them to do what you want them to do. <clears throat> okay. Um, uh, Scott, I mean, I've had things that are $100, that cost $100. They sell great on Facebook ads. It depends on the product. And you're, uh, and it all comes down, still comes down to the art, your understanding of the people that you're showing the ad to. Um, well, Mario, the, that, that'll if they're ha people are happy, they'll come back. So uh, I uh, I really try to minimize the time, the phone time with customer service. So it's typically they'll answer the phone and take the information, and then they'll research it off the call, and then most of the time they'll just email them back. I like to Phoenix. I like to charge at least three times my cost. That's my preference. So I can't always do that. Okay. So what I, I just want enough dollars in my profit to be able to make a, a good profit and have enough money to pay to acquire a customer. Okay. Danny says, this is very helpful, Frank. Thanks. May want to talk more somehow about the type of training. Definitely. Yeah. So apply. So we've, I've got, there's, there's uh, plenty of options even on a budget. Okay, great. Phoenix says, this is a nice early Christmas present. Um, Mario, um, most importantly, I want the person to be happy with a product they've received. So if if you're early on into your e-commerce business, uh, the product presentation from the packaging is not your first priority right now. So, so if you're early on, that's something you do later on. Okay, you, when you've got, then, you know, when you've got things coming into the States, it's coming from your shipping from your own fulfillment or, you know, from a fulfillment center like Mint, uh, like the one I shared with you. Um, Mint Fulfill, if you're, if you're having things, then worry, start worrying about your packaging. But um, early on, just you, the marketing, getting your ad to convert profitably is some an art form that you need to learn first and then once you get the marketing part down then you can move along um, okay all right anything else St still have uh, let's see Scott says thanks so much so many gold and nuggets I will continue to follow you wish you uh, I could stay on longer I have to go head to bed I have to work in the morning yeah for me it's only 8 15 for some of you it's past 11. Um, how did you learn your ad copy? <coughs> um, <laughs> I use a few emojis 
usually not more than three. I should you should have some in there. How did I learn it? Um, uh, 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 that's hard to answer. Uh, some of it I learned from others, and some I learned from reading ads. And then I've read some some good books. Um, uh, there actually none of them were about ad copy, but um, uh, I n I have never used a hashtag in my ads. Never. Oh, that the seventy five percent, ninety percent. That's in in video view uh, audiences. So when you have a video ad, you can retarget people that have watched certain percentages of the video. It's a really cool feature. Oh, Danny says today, happy birthday, Danny. So ad copy is, is there's books on that. You can do it yourself or in my training, I have, I, I have a, what I believe is a really simple, easy way to write ad copy. So I would always just sit down and start writing it. And I, and I, I was trying to figure out how to train other people how to do the same thing I did. And I thought, and I thought, and I came up with a really simple way of, and I have a form and some training, and it'll, it'll get you writing some good app, ad copy real quick. I'm not going to, um, it, it, it's fairly simple, but it takes a little thought. There's a little mindset process and a thought process that goes into it. Okay, so, um, yeah, they're all dark posts. I do all link video link posts. Um, any other questions? So, um, and all right. Okay. Okay. I think we're going to end the call. Everybody have a great uh, evening and a great weekend. And um, we'll do one, another one of these soon. Um, um, books I like. Okay, one of my favorite books. It, let me um, let me start thinking about my books. Blue Ocean Strategy is. It, I took the philosophy from that book and applied it to my products. The book ha, ha, is nothing about e-commerce, but I like to read books about business philosophy, and that was one of them that influenced my the way I choose products. Um, Psycho Cybernetics is a great book about uh, working your mindset, changing your mindset about things. Um, Spin Selling is a book about uh, at writing ads. That's one another one to look at. Uh, Ganti says thank you very much for the information. Debbie says thank you. Um, uh, Phoenix says OMG, love Spin Selling. Cool. Thanks for your time. Yeah, Psycho Cybernetics is really good. That's that's an old book. Um, I've just been set spelling this as well. Max, yeah, Maxwell's Maltz. That's right. Blue Ocean Strategy is real good because that's um, kind of what I talked about here about uh, don't not chasing top sellers. So that's I was already doing that, but after reading the book, that that, that now. Uh, they they explain the philosophy of of that. Okay, yeah, try out Mint Fulfill if you're bringing some things in. He's he does a great job, and yeah, FrankKinney.com apply if I've uh, got training, mentoring, and it's a lot. You know, it, it's a lot of more of what I've talked about here. All right, I'm gonna end the call. Everybody, thanks for joining in, and have a Danny says you rocked over two hours. Thanks again. Yep, over two hours now. Yeah, I could go on and on. I did, doing this for 16 years. It's uh, I could go on and on. All right, let's um, everybody have a great holiday and and talk to you again soon. I'm gonna turn off the screen and turn off the the video.